Kung Flu. a domestic dispute that ended up deadly. The young man you see on the ground is Kyron Sullivan, 27. He did not make it. The young lady that's arrested for this particular incident is only 22 years old, Valencia E. Phillips, out of Springfield, Illinois. For those of you who do not know where Springfield, Illinois is, this is where it is right here. This is south of Peoria, closer to St. Louis. Um, sort of southwest of Champaign, Illinois. This is it here. Now, I'm going to bring you guys this particular story. is going to read that. Um, suspect has been, a has been arrested in connection to Monday's homicide. Uh, Valencia Phillips, 22 Springfield. Monday, March 14th, around 2 p.m. She's charged with first-degree murder, aggravated discharge of a firearm, an aggravated unlawful use of a weapon. The young man, only 26 years old. All right. They're going to say he was pronounced at St. John's. Preliminary autopsies, multiple gunshot wounds is how he passed. There's also formal charges of forthcoming. I want to bring you also to another fatal, sh another shooting involving a young lady. This is it here. They're going to say a Chicago woman charged shooting a man in front of his children. Also, domestic. Yo, in 2022, it is not even worth beefing with anybody nowadays. They're going to say a 34-year-old woman is facing charges. Allegedly. Allegedly shooting a man in front of children. Now, it's not saying if it's his children, her children. They're just saying children. In West Rogers Park, Nicole Talbert accused of shooting a 33-year-old man in front of two girls, ages 13 and 14, around 8.05 on the 7500 block of North Oakley. They're going to say he was taken to St. Francis where he's in good condition. Also read a story that she walked up to him and popped him in the leg. They're also going to say she, Nicole Tolbert, also shot at a 27-year-old man, but he wasn't struck. She was arrested minutes later. And a gun was recovered at the scene. They're going to say she's being charged with three counts of attempt. First degree murder and aggravated battery of a deadly weapon. She's doing court, which is today, Friday. I want to also bring you guys another story on the 900 block of North St. Louis. Young man shot and killed. His name is Kevin Change, only 32 years old. This is the footage here of that shooting. Look at that car. Unbelievable. Let me tell y'all something. It is getting hot out. I gave, uh, on my Facebook channel, I brought you guys story after story after story. Now this story is gonna read. Kevin Chains, shot to death on the 900 block of North St. Louis in Humble Park, West Side, Chicago, March 17th, which was yesterday was yesterday. A man, a man was killed in another hurt Thursday, yesterday in Humble Park. Um, they were in the 900 block of North St. Louis Avenue about 1.10 p.m. broad daylight when someone just opened fire. Kevin Change, 32, was struck on the left side of his body, taken to the hospital where he was pronounced. All right. Stories also read the other man suffered a graze wound and refused medical treatment, no rest, no arrest in this. Now, I'm going to bring you guys out here. Of course, I bring you guys out here. This is exactly where it happened at right here. All right, you guys know I normally take you guys out there. There's normally cameras everywhere. On this particular block, there are no cameras. In this particular case, they are saying as of now, no suspects have been formally arrested. All right? It's getting hot out, y'all. I brought you guys several shootings on my Facebook page and footage. It's getting hot. Y'all got to be careful out here. Also, yesterday, 
March 17th, Willie Wilson had a gas giveaway. He's just announced he's having another one. Yesterday's was $200,000. He's announcing another one of $1 million. Now, let's talk about Willie Wilson. My man not just does this. A lot of people are going to say, oh, it's an election year. He's trying to buy votes. This man is everywhere in our community. Churches, giving away gift cards. Even in non-election year, this man gives out bikes. This man gives out turkeys. This man said, F it, I'm going to give out cash. He sat out there one day and gave out cash. So the story's going to read Chicago businessman Willie Wilson expanding free gas fill-ups. He's donated a million the next time. Wow. That's amazing. Now let's talk about Willie Wilson for a second. This man ran as a governor on the Republican ticket. Everybody inside the community he does work for said, oh, I don't want to vote for him because he's on a Republican ticket. I'm like, so what? You will never see Prisker inside your community giving away a million dollars, giving away $200 million. The only thing you're going to see Prisker is in your community the day before his election. Oh, there's them. Now you want to pop up. A month before the election. Two weeks before the election. You want to pop up and what is he doing? He's shaking hands in, in, in communities. But Willie Wilson is boots on the ground. He's inside the community. Now let's see if the people who's getting free gas show up for him like that at the polls. Next time he runs for election. I talked to a few people. They're telling me, oh, well, I didn't vote for him because I don't like the way he talks. What? You would rather vote for somebody outside your community who would never come inside your community, who would never do for your community just because you don't like the way he talks? He's not articulate enough for you? He's a well-established businessman. Well-established businessman. And he has other businesses outside the state. They're saying yesterday that gas that gas pile up was ridiculous. Um, a lot of people had criticism for him, saying that he should have gave out gift cards so they can just go and fill up gas on their own accord. This start, um, the story's gonna read starting at 7 a.m. Each vehicle would be able to fill up fifty dollars until one million. This dude is ridiculous. That's crazy. Shout out to Willie Wilson. I am forever grateful he's Man, and so a lot of people would, you know, had criticism for him, and other people were like, hey, just be grateful. I did a show uh, with the young sister, Jenea Davis, from Boss Conversations, and I said this, you know, man, I'm forever grateful, and I would never criticize him. He does good work in the community, and, and when he runs again, I'll be the first one to show up for him at the polls. I'm vote for him, because he's boots on the ground. However... We got the right concept. We almost there. But what I said was this. In Chinatown, they're millionaires. They're billionaires. They said, hey, you know what? I'm going to drop a hotel in Chinatown. I'm going to drop a gas station. Businesses in the community. Therefore, our great, great, great grandkids will eat forever. I'm going to flip that million dollars into $20 million in the next five years. You will never see a... a um, a, a, a person from Chinatown needing jobs. If you come from China to the United States, you walk right into Chinatown, you've got a job that same day, here you go. You don't have to carjack. You don't have to sell drugs. You don't have to rob, kill, and steal. You've got a jobs to feed your family, there you go. Oh, you just got out of jail, even though you don't have to go to jail, but if you do, you got a job. So I'm like, hey, you know, we got to take that next step. So we taking the closest step is putting the money back into the community, circulating that dollar. But we don't own the gas stations. So our dollar lasts six hours in our community. We take that money, give it back. They take our money and go back to their community because they don't live in that community. They don't pay taxes in that community. They don't hire from that community. They don't shop in that community. So they be like, thank you, Doop! outside our community. So our children cannot go get a job. From where we're putting our money, our children have to go outside. We spend 98% of our money outside our community. 
Therefore, our children have to sell drugs. Our children have to carjack. Our children are thirsty, and they end up in jail. They end up in one of these stories I just covered. That's where our children end up. So Dr. Dre gave 70 million to a school. We'll never see a dime of that money. Um, you know, we got the right concept. And I'm not criticizing the 42. I'm forever grateful. But I just, I just want us to get that group economics. I want them to say, hey, Bink, you know what? Inglewood, y'all got uh, Austin, you got 97 murders in this community. I'm gonna build a grocery store, a, a, a mall. All y'all youngsters that's selling drugs, all y'all that's just getting out of jail, go get y'all a job. I want to circulate that money tenfold. And therefore, I want your great, great, great grandkids to eat good. I don't want you having to rob, kill, and steal. I'm going to flip that money back in our communities. So I think we're almost there. You know, I'm forever grateful. No question. I'm going to show up for Willie Wilson at that poll and vote for that man. For governor, if he runs for governor, or whatever he runs for. I don't care if he runs for president. I'm going to vote for him. I don't see what's we call it in, in our communities giving away money. So if he runs for president, guess who's voting for him? I will. And I, I, everybody that show up to get that free gas should do the same. Because your politicians y'all vote for will never put boots on the ground. So I, I'm forever grateful. But yo, let's just take that next step. I want Oprah and Jordan to say, you know what, Chicago? I see y'all struggling. I'm going to drop a, a cheesecake factory in y'all community. And I'm going to have somebody from Austin, Inglewood run it. Therefore, they could easily have good money circulating back in the community. Your property value would go up. Here's a fact. Where there's no crime, where there's um, thriving businesses, guess what? Crime goes down. Where there's high poverty, crime goes up. What's happening in Austin and Inglewood? High poverty. Why? We spend $1.3 trillion. That's because we go outside our community and we let others from outside our community build businesses in our community. They don't hire from the community. They don't shop in the community. They don't even pay taxes in the community. They never live in the community. So they take their money back to where they live at and they pour that money inside their community and their children have jobs because they have businesses and they don't have to kill and steal. They don't have to rob. They don't have to carjack. They don't have to sell drugs. They don't have to go to jail. They just go down the street. I would love to show one of the little homeboys on the corner, hey, young homie, go get you a job down the street. My man's running that spot. Go get you a job. You ain't got to stand on this corner. You ain't got to rob and break in the houses. Go get you a job. We almost there. I'm forever grateful, but yo, we just got to get it, man. Take that million and buy a gas station that we own. Buy two gas stations. Buy a, another McDonald's, put that joint right and smack inside that community, make that community thrive. Put a grocery store in there, put a mall inside there, and give all the people in Inglewood, Austin, or wherever um, jobs. And therefore, we almost there. And then we can flip those businesses into more. Anyway, I want you guys to like, comment, let me know what you think about this video. Peace, peace.